Hey everyone, if you're new to the channel, I'm Machine Builder and I'm all about creating amazing add-ons for Minecraft Bedrock Edition and inspiring and helping other people to do the same. In this video, you'll learn how to make a basic script in your add-ons. But before we get into this, I'd like to mention I have a Discord server with a wonderful active community, so feel free to join in the discussions and request video ideas you'd like to see in the future. There should be a link somewhere down in the description below, but with no further ado, let's get right into this. So in this tutorial, we'll cover how to set up a basic behavior pack with support for scripts. We'll also cover how to write a script that listens to different events in the world and responds to them in certain ways. This is intended to get you familiarized with how the scripting system in Minecraft Bedrock Edition actually works so that you can see the potential capabilities and then create your own fun and interactive systems. So before we properly start, there are a couple things to consider and get to know. Throughout this video, we'll be making use of JavaScript. JavaScript is often called JS, so if I call it JS during the video, just know that I'm referring to the same thing. If you don't know what JavaScript is, JavaScript is a programming language mostly used for web development to make websites more interactive for users. We, however, won't be using JavaScript for web development in this tutorial, but instead to create Minecraft add-ons. Now, if you don't know JavaScript and want to learn, which I'd highly recommend, there are plenty of resources available online. A great one I'd personally recommend, as I've used it before, is W3Schools. There'll be a link to that in the description below, titled W3Schools JavaScript Tutorial, if you'd like to check it out. Again, I cannot stress this enough, learning JavaScript will help you immensely if you want to use it in your add-ons. Now some notes about the API. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be using JavaScript to create Minecraft add-ons. This is a relatively new system, so there are many things that may be missing from the API provided to us. And as an important clarification, an API is how we interact with the Minecraft world. The developers of Minecraft have provided us with a collection of functions we can use to do specific things in the world or listen to specific events. Without this, we wouldn't be able to do anything really. So new features are constantly being added to the API. So if something's missing at the moment, there's a good chance it will be added in future. So I'm interrupting the middle of this video to give you a very important reminder. 94.4% um, of you guys are boring people apparently. I didn't make the rules, but according to this you are. And then only 5.6% of you are cool people. So I think you know what to do there. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and lightly tap the like button and also leave a comment to let me know what you thought of this video. Anyway, let's get right back to the video. So this is how we create a behavior pack. If you don't already have a pack and don't know how to, this is a quick guide on the Bedrock Wiki. There will be a link to this in the description titled Bedrock Wiki Project Setup. So I read through the intro section here and then down to the BP manifest over here. So I'll just quickly follow this guide and set up a pack. So here we now have an example pack copied from the wiki and all we have in here is a manifest. So if we go ahead and open this manifest up in any text editor, I'll be going through different editor types later, but for now we'll just double click it to open it in default. So this might be Notepad, this might be Visual Studio Code, this could be whatever you've set before. Now you'll notice we're missing UUIDs here. These are just three dots and we need a UUID. So reading a little bit further down the Bedrock Wiki article, we can see what a UUID is. A UUID is a universally unique identifier. This identifies your pack for other programs, so Minecraft, and it looks something like this. So it's a bunch of random letters and numbers in a format. So if you go over here and click this link, it will take you to this website called Online UUID Generator. If we click refresh, we'll get a new UUID each time. So we can just click copy here, then open up our code editor again, or whatever file we're editing, and paste that in instead of the three dots. Make sure you leave these quotes here because they are essential for the format. I'll just zoom in so you guys can see this better. So we have our UUID and the quotes around it. If you have syntax highlighting, it'll be very obvious if it's correct because if it isn't, it'll show you that there are errors. So now if we refresh this again to get another UUID, and now we copy this again, head back over here, paste that into the second UUID. Again, make sure you have these quotes, they're very important. So now that we have a behavior pack with our manifest, we can go ahead and add a module to the manifest. A module here tells the game what functionality our pack should have, so creating a script in our add-on will need to let the game know that we want to use scripting. In this module, you can tell the game where our script file is located. Typically, this is called main.js, so we'll stick with that convention for clarity. You'll notice we already have an entry in the module section. This module tells the game that our pack is a behavior pack. So let's go ahead and add our scripting module. For that, you can copy all of this area, copy that, paste it. Make sure you add a comma after the first one so that the formatting is correct. And now in here, we want to change type 
to script like that we'll need a new UUID so we'll go ahead and grab one from the generator our version can remain the same and then we need a new attribute called entry and make sure you add a comma after this version list and use quotes to name your attributes so then you want colon and then more quotes here and then you can type scripts forward slash main.js so this is our entry point that minecraft will identify and run now there's one last thing we need to do with our manifest which is add a dependency the dependency section in a manifest tells the game which other packs or content is required when this pack is applied to a world or used in any way the dependency we need to add here is the scripting module and the version that we'd like to use i know it seems a little odd since I just said that we told the game we wanted to use scripting in the module section over here. But here in the dependencies is where we'll tell the game which version of scripts we'd like to use and which specific pieces of the script API we'd like. The only one we'll use in this tutorial is at minecraft forward slash server. But there are other modules of the API which provide different functionality which we'll cover in later videos. So to add this section we're going to add a comma after this main list here for modules. And then again add a new attribute. It's called dependencies, like that. And then in here, we have a list. So that is these square brackets. And then we need the curly brackets. And here, we need an attribute called module underscore name. So if we type that in, add colons, and then more quotes, type at Minecraft forward slash server. So now this tells the game we want the Minecraft forward slash server module. And if we add a comma, so we want another attribute called version. And in this, we need to find the stable version for Minecraft server scripts. So this is Waveplay's script API NPM detector. And there'll be a link for this in the description uh, titled script API NPMs from Waveplay's. So if we go ahead and click server, because that's the one we're using, you can then see this version here is 1.7.0. So after the last app, that's the version we want. So we can copy that and paste it directly into here. So now we have this here. As of this video, this is the latest version. So if you're copying this video very close in the future, you can just go ahead and use this version. So now our manifest is all set up properly and we can finally get onto the more exciting content of this tutorial, which is actually creating our script. So in our behavior pack, we wanna right click and create a new folder. We call this one scripts because this is where our scripts will be housed just for clarity and keeping the code neat. So if we go into here, we can then create a new file. We can just make a text document and change the file extension to main.js. Windows will prompt you to make sure you want to change it, so just click yes. If you don't have file extensions, you can go up here, click view, and then file name extensions. So without that, you won't be able to change the name extension, but with it, you can. So now that we have our main.js file, there's one thing we have to do before we can start editing it, and that is choosing an editor. So if you head over to the description, there should be a link titled Software and Preparation, and we need to choose an editor to use. So if you're on a Windows PC, I'd recommend VS Code or Bridge. However, if you're on a mobile device, I'd recommend this page, checking it out, and going through the list of different editors that you can use on those devices. So for configuring Visual Studio Code as well, there is a big list of things you can do here that all add in that typing hinting that I was using earlier when making the manifest. So if you're not using VS Code, you can skip to the timestamp on screen now. But if you are, I'll quickly walk you through how to get auto completions in your editor. So for this, we'll need to install the npm package for types for the Minecraft script API. NPM stands for Node Package Manager, but I won't go into detail about that in this tutorial as the video would be far too long and boring. So in short, NPM allows you to install packages for JavaScript, and we'll be installing the Minecraft Script API package so that Visual Studio Code can give us hints as we type. So if you don't already have NPM, you can download it using the link in the description titled Downloading and Installing Node.js and NPM. So on this website, you can see some basic information of how to install this. But this is currently using npm which you obviously don't have so you can't download the latest version so scroll down here to osx or windows node installers and here we have the node.js download page so heading over here we can see we have the windows installer mac os installer and source code all you need to worry about is the windows installer so just download the version you like best which is msi usually and then just download the version which corresponds to your system architecture 
So typically that would be 64-bit, but it might be 32-bit. So just make sure you know that one. So now that we've got npm set up and installed, we can use the npm install command or shorthand npm i command in a terminal window. To open a terminal window in the Windows operating system, head over to the Windows icon or click the Windows logo key on your keyboard and type in cmd. So here we have our command prompt. If we open that up, we'll get this new window, which is the command prompt terminal. So keep this window open for now as we'll come back to it shortly. So now we need to figure out what the current latest version of the npm package is. So we can head over to the page for this package by simply searching on Google for npm npm Minecraft server. So if we enter this, it should come up as the first version, Minecraft forward slash server. So clicking on this link, the page should look something like this, at Minecraft forward slash server, because that is the module version we're using. And this contains the types related to manipulating Minecraft world, including entities, blocks, dimensions, and more. So this is exactly what we need. There is also some documentation for this over here. By just clicking on this link, you can get taken to the official learnmicrosoft.com website. Eventually it will load, there we go. So you can see there are a bunch of different things you can use, but we won't go into detail about this documentation site in this video. So if we go head back over to this site, and we take a look on the right side of the screen, you can see what version is currently the latest. This is the version we want to install because it is currently the most recently updated stable version. So we've already found this before by using the wave plays npm types getter, and we've already set that in our manifest, but at least we know we can find it here as well. So also, if you'd like to see other versions of the package, you can head over to the versions tab on the npm site, or you can go back to this wave plays website and click on this one, server again, so here we have stable, which is the current stable version of scripts in the stable version of the game. And then we have stable beta. So this is for the stable version of the game, but beta scripts. And then we have preview. So these are stable scripts in preview. And then these are beta scripts in preview. So really don't worry about these because these can all change and break your code. So really all I like to use here is stable. So if we go ahead and just click this, you can see copied the command and this is the install command that we'll be using. So back in our terminal now, we can paste the command in and press enter, and you'll see we are installing the types. So you'll see our result is removed one package, change one package and audited blah blah blah. As long as there's no error, that's all right. This is my result because I already had the pack installed, but now I've just updated it again. So if this didn't work for you and you get some errors, Please recheck the steps for installing npm, and if that doesn't work again, try restarting your PC. But if nothing's working, don't worry, this isn't a required step, it's just something optional to help your workflow so you don't have to feel worried about not having it. So now we go into the code editing, just open this up in whatever code editor you're using. I'm using Visual Studio Code Insiders. That doesn't really matter though, we've already discussed that. So now we have to write our script. So here, we're going to import world from at Minecraft forward slash server. So what this here does, this is our module name that we've set a dependency for in our pack. So this will be valid. And then here we have world. So world is how we access events and do things to the Minecraft world. I'll go over this later when we look at the documentation, but for now, just know that's what we need. So now let's quickly create a hello world setup so that we can validate that our code does work. So for that, we want world dot send message send message should have a capital M and no spaces but a lowercase s at the start so here we can put a string in which is two double quotes or two single quotes or also two of these funky keys so we're going to use double quotes for now just to not confuse anything and let's type in hello world and we need to end our line with semicolons we don't really need to but it's good practice too so in our world editing behavior pack section, we have pack.name, pack.description. It's called this because we didn't actually set a name or description in the manifest, but we can go ahead and just activate this. And now we have it in our world. Just as a quick side note, this is where we can set our name. So if we wanted this to be like scripting tutorial, we can do that. And then pack.description, we can set this to whatever we want. So this is the pack description like that. And now if we go back out of the world editing and back in, we'll see these updated. So just to check that, we now have scripting tutorial. This is the pack description. So this ensures that you're using the right pack if you set a name. So now if we go ahead and play this world, open it up, let the game load. 
you'll see, check our chat, there's nothing. But if we type slash reload, you can then see, hello world. We don't have anything in the chat initially because the world technically loaded before we spawned in. But by using the slash reload command, it reloads all function and script files from all behavior packs. So this basically tells the game to rerun our main.js code. It's very useful for development because we can constantly update and without having to leave the world. So now let's take a look at how scripts can add functionality that add-ons couldn't do without them. One example of this is listening for block breaking events. However, there are plenty of other events that you can listen for and respond to accordingly to give your add-on that extra level of interaction with the world. So here we have Jaylee's docs, which are linked in the description below, titled as Jaylee's Script API Docs. So if we head over here to the game version we're using, which is 1.20.50, you can see that on the main menu of Minecraft down here in the bottom right corner, 1.20.51. So the latest version will always have three numbers here, like 1, 20, 50, and then the latest preview version will have four numbers like this. So we always want the stable version. So if we go ahead and click this, and now we have all the modules listed that we have access to with the script API. But what we want here is at Minecraft forward slash server and then the version we're using, which is 1.7.0. So clicking this, we can then see a list of everything we get access to with the script API. Now there are plenty of classes listed here, but we'll focus on one for this video and that is world. So if we scroll down to world, you can see we have world. Open this up, it's capitalized here. So this one here with lowercase is just a variable, which is simply an instance of this class. So the real class we're using is capital world here, and then we have properties. And then in here, the important thing is after events. So if we open up after events, you can see we get the access to the property. So where this is in the world, that's just scrolling down. And then you can see this is an instance of the class world after events. So if we click this, you can now see everything we get access to in the after events of the world. So there's also world before events, but that won't be covered in this video. Now in here, we see a list of every event we can listen for. Note that because these are after events, we technically get to listen for the event being completed rather than when the event starts. But again, I won't go into more depth than that with the difference between before and after events. So the event here we'll focus on is player break block. So you see here, player break block. If we go ahead and click this, you can see this is just like scrolling down again and we can see what class it actually is. So usually a class is capital to start with. So if we go ahead and click this, we can see where the actual event signal is. And an event signal is just how we listen to an event. So it has a subscribe method and an unsubscribe method. But if we go down here to the subscribe method, we can see the argument. And if we click on this link here, that will take us to where we actually see the data for our event. So these are different attributes. And we can see that the event gives us things like the block that was impacted by the event, the data of the block that was broken, the dimension where this happened, the item that the player was using both before and after the break. You can see that before and after. And then also the player who broke the block. So now let's go ahead and make use of what we've just found. We will just extend our code slightly to listen for this event. So we know it's in world dot after events like that. And then we know it's called player break block because that is the signal. And now if we run the subscribe function, which I just showed you, and then in here we need a function, which takes one argument called data. So data in here is actually an instance of this class, which shows us all these properties that we just talked about earlier. So now copying this hello world example, we can just take that, paste that here, change this text, and say a player broke a block with an exclamation point. So now if we head back into the world, with some random cave sounds it seems, and then we break a block, we can see the chat message says a player broke a block. That's exactly what we want. So now let's go ahead and use some of those attributes that we just saw. So say for example we want to say the player name who broke the block, we can add a space here, and then add data.player.name. So data.player here is this variable here, so player, if we click this, and then click this again to get the class, you can see this is a class player, and a player has the properties name, which is the actual name of the player, which is exactly what we want here. So now we should see the player name in the chat, and if we just check that that works by running forward slash reload again, the reload command is great, and now we can fill that back in, break some more blocks, you can see it's my name. It's a bit of a weird name because I'm not signed in, but that is my name. 
So now we've validated that our pack actually works and that the script all works as expected. So really what you've learnt in this video is you now have a basic understanding of what JavaScript is, you know where to go to learn JavaScript, and you've been familiarized with the layout of scripts, how to import modules, which modules are available, and then how to write some basic JavaScript code to listen to events and do something in response. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and leave a comment for any future video suggestions, add-on creations, or various concepts you'd like to see me work on, and make sure to smash that subscribe button too so you don't miss any future videos like these. Thank you for taking your time and making it this far through the video. I cannot express it enough how much your support means to me. And don't forget, I've got some great new tutorials coming up soon.